Colson here with another unboxing video. If you know me and you've been watching my videos and you know exactly what this is all about. I'm really excited about this so I'm just going to get right to it. So let's get started. Okay, first I'm going to get something to cut this open with. I got my scissors here. First we got some packing material, Let's throw that to the side, shipping list, we don't need that. First thing we got, AMD FX processor, black edition, set that to the side for now. And last but not least, we got the Gigabyte. 990 FXA UD3 R5 motherboard. Okay, here's a closer look at the AMD FX Black Edition processor. It's an 8350 at 4 GHz, and in turbo mode it's 4.2 GHz with a total of 16 megabytes of cache. And on the side of the box here it says get up to 8 cores in your system and take your gaming to a whole new level with the fully loaded gameplay and multitasking performance of the AMD FX Processor Black Edition. Unlocked out of the box, achieved ultimate power with up to 5 GHz and 8 cores, overclocked to your system for supercharged performance, combine the power of this processor with AMD Radeon graphics and AMD 9 series chipset to deliver the ideal mix of an action-packed HD experience and responsive performance. So pretty cool. And here's a close-up look at the 990 FXA UD3 R5 motherboard by Gigabyte. Ultra durable. Here's the back of the box. You can see all the different things that the motherboard has. I'll slowly go over it. So you can see it all. Right, I'm going to unbox the motherboard first and try to do everything with one hand since I don't have a tripod anymore. Okay, the first thing you see is the motherboard itself all wrapped up in an anti-static bag. We will put this to the side for now. Alright, first thing is the SLI ribbon by NVIDIA. It's pretty cool. Two SATA cables. I have a bunch of these, but it doesn't hurt to have extras. The motherboard driver installation CD. Get the latest from the internet, so toss this to the side. Unless uh, your Windows is having trouble, you know, installing drivers for whatever reason and yes it does happen because I've experienced it many times and also seen it many times so it doesn't hurt to hold on to this though okay a little sticker I don't really use these either though I should but I don't and then we have the usual manual and other stuff that's not really important <laughs> Alright, and here's the motherboard, all out of the bag. Looks really, really nice. I like it a lot. Now with the motherboards, to me, two main things that are important. One, the layout. You know, it's got to have a nice, nice layout. And also, another important thing is the color scheme. <laughs> as ridiculous as that may sound, it's true, I mean... I either like all black motherboards or if it's black and blue. They're the only two main colors that I like. So 
um, the motherboard that I'm replacing, which I'll show you in a second, but that one is a ASUS. You know, I love ASUS. I love a few other ones as well. And Gigabyte is actually one of them. So this time I went with Gigabyte. See how well this does. The motherboard itself has a nice matte black finish to it. Looks very sleek and modern. Nice heat sinks for the north and south bridge. Okay, so you're probably wondering what exactly is on this motherboard as far as connections go. So I'll quickly tell you. You got your 8-pin CPU power connector here, your CPU fan connector here, the CPU socket itself here, four DDR3 memory slots here, a power fan connector here, a 24-pin power connector here, a system fan connector here, the CMOS battery itself here, up to six gigabyte six SATA connectors here, one, two, three, four PCI Express slots here, two mini PCI Express slots here, and one regular PCI slot there. And there is another system fan connector as well, right here down at the bottom. Okay, all these connections down at the bottom here are for your front panel of your computer case. So from left to right, I'm going to start. So you got your front panel audio connector here, your SPDIF output connector here, your COM connector here, your 1, 2, 3 USB 2.0 connectors here, your front panel USB 3.0 connector here, your TPM connector there, and for these, these are just for your like LED indicators, lights, and uh, your power and reset buttons. Okay, for the I.O. itself, you got your PS2 connector, either for mouse or keyboard. You got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 USB 2.0 connectors, your SPDIF, 1, 2 eSATA connectors, 1, 2 USB 3.0 connectors, 1 gigabyte Ethernet connector, and your audio. Okay, I'm going to try to do this one-handed, so bear with me. I almost got it. Okay. Come on out. There we go. Alright, so off to the side here. Might as well get this out of the way. Got the processor itself, along with the case sticker. All little pins. Okay, set this off to the side for now. Got a little booklet. Toss that to the side. And the heat sink itself. Along with the fan. Uh, so then I can. Now this will do just fine because I'm not really much of an overclocker, to be completely honest with you. So this will do. And it fell off, but there's the uh, compound that they pre install on there. So that's cool, I don't have to use any of mine for right now. But after a while, I'll eventually take this off and wipe that off and reapply mine in the future. Here they are together out of the box. Yeah, that's a little close up, better look at them. Nice copper, copper piping there. Not too bad. But I'll eventually go with water cooling in the very near future. So this is what's currently in my computer case right now. And it's going to be soon replaced. And the motherboard is an ASUS and the processor is an AMD. All running at 2.70 GHz. Yeah, a little pathetic nowadays, but 
it's one of the main reasons why I'm upgrading it. And it's just getting pretty old. I mean, I've had this motherboard and processor since like 2011, so. Yep, it's definitely time. Okay, two things I'm going to be doing now. One is obviously seeing if this motherboard and or processor is going to be working. Hopefully, it all will. And two, see if my current installation of Windows that's running with the old motherboard and processor is going to be happy with me swapping this. <laughs> Because you know how uh, the partition of NTFS and Windows itself is, you know, it can be pretty picky. It can be pretty tricky of, of doing that. Okay, the new motherboard is installed and ready to go. I had to take some time to really get that motherboard in there because it's obviously bigger than the other one. And I had to reroute some wires. I know it looks a little bit messy, but I'll go over it later, do some cable management. But at this point, I'm not too worried about it. I just want to see if it all works because... If it doesn't, then uh, I'd be really upset, really mad, because I did all this for nothing. But anyways, here's the old motherboard. Again, it's a uh, ASUS with an AMD processor. A lot smaller. You know, it's not the full motherboard type, but uh, there's I.O. alerts and all that good stuff. Probably going to put that back in the uh, original case. Okay, before I power on the PC, again, if you're doing what I'm doing, which is swapping out the motherboard, there's a good possibility of the computer doing one of two things. Um, one, after the BIOS, it'll either sit at a black screen with a white cursor at the top left corner and just sit there. Or two, after the BIOS, it'll try to load Windows, but it'll keep restarting after, you know, an attempt. But it'll just keep doing it over and over again, which is just mainly doing a blue screen of death. Because you're pretty much, you know, changing a lot of things, basically. Because uh, there's a lot of stuff to the motherboard. So, you're really changing things around for the, the operating system and the, uh, the partition itself. So, that, that's something to keep in mind. Now I'm going to make sure that the power supply is on. There we go. Power it up. Uh oh. Huh. CPU fans getting stuck. That's not good. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. Um, so I'm just gonna keep letting it run and see what happens. And don't mind that, that's one of the uh, fans for the hard drives at the bottom for the air intake. Hey, there's a post. It's a little bit loud, but it'll quiet down. Uh, well, it uh, shut down. What the heck is going on? Be right back. Okay, well, as you can see, it's powered on, and I am in the BIOS. Strange, strange, strange. First, I reseated the heatsink and processor and powered it on, did the same thing. Then I took out my graphics card and the network card. It actually stayed on, and then I figured, well, it's one of the two. And so I kept the graphics card in there and I did the same thing. I'm like, oh crap, here we go. And then I uh, noticed my keyboard, this one right here, which is USB, wasn't turning on. The lights weren't coming on, so I figured, well, why not just grab an old PS2 type uh, keyboard and try that one out since it has a PS2 connector on the motherboard. And sure enough, it's working. I'm not sure what exactly is going on at this point, but uh, yeah, I'm in a BIOS and just setting things up as when it needs to be set, like the date and time. It was actually set back to like 2014 and all that stuff, so I'm going to save and quit this right now. And see if it actually boots up this time. Fingers crossed. I'm just glad it's actually working. Huh. Alright, here we go. Will it load Windows? Nope. 
exactly what I'm talking about. It's not going to load Windows because it's a different motherboard. Oh well, at least I saved my, uh, backed up my, oh, there we go. Look at that. Huh. Sweet. Awesome. I was going to say, at least I backed up my data before I did all this. Now oh, there's Defragler. Huh. Nice. Okay. Yes. That is that. Sweet. This is awesome. I am really happy. I wish uh, Windows 10 still had the GUI for uh, the Windows scoring. So I can see what my rating of this PC is now. <laughs> In my older video, one of the videos that I posted, I, I had the score of the old processor and, and uh, motherboard and all the other stuff. It's pretty average, and I mean, I'm not going to complain, it uh, ran games pretty good and all that stuff. And of course my icons are going to get messed up, which I was also expecting to happen. It's fine. I'm just glad I don't have to reinstall all these, because <laughs> Steam alone I have over a hundred games, so <sighs> yes, I am happy. Nice. I'll clean all this up later on, but right now I'm just <laughs> sweet. Also, back to the uh, Windows scoring. Um, they didn't completely get rid of the Windows scoring. They got rid of the uh, GUI, which is the graphical user interface, and they all made it into DOS. And I tried that, and it's just, to me, my personal opinion, it's just horrible. And it takes a while. I mean, I know the other one did too, but I, I just don't like it. They need to bring that back. But, um,. Now let's see uh, the system specs here. System information. Not exactly what I want it, but let's see. Yep. Well, it definitely loads things a lot quicker than before. Here we go, AMD FX 8358 core processor, 4 gigahertz. And the memory that I did have installed is already 16 gigs. And the max that it can go on this board is uh, 32. So that's another thing in the near future I'm going to be getting along with water cooling. And yeah, let's go into device manager see if everything's loaded properly as driver wise. Nope. Um. Doesn't have a uh, network either. Huh. Well, I'm gonna have to take care of all this stuff, but, um. Okay, that's gonna be it for this video, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. I'm gonna have to take care of all the driver situation and put everything back in a case and do wire management. Obviously, everything works, which is a big relief to me, especially the motherboard and processor. So, yes. This is definitely a lot faster than the old motherboard and processor. Now don't get me wrong, like I said before, uh, the old motherboard and processor were running great. It ran games at average speeds with no problems whatsoever. I just uh, need to bump it up. Just getting around up time. And uh, I had that stuff since like 2011 now. So definitely, definitely due for a change. So yeah don't forget to comment rate and subscribe and i'll talk to you guys later and uh if you have any questions about anything or need help with anything please feel free to leave a comment down below and i'll get to you all right take care guys bye quick update the hdmi to dvi dongle that i've had for quite some time now it's actually pretty old um, is the reason why all this stuff happened. This little thing. 
Now I had a problem with this before a while back ago when I had Windows 7. I think it's time for uh, a new one. But yeah. Oh, and also my uh, USB keyboard does work.